What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. We got a New York Jet in the building, Kaleche Osemele. What's up, man? KO, hey, man, good to meet you. What's going on? Nice to thanks you. so much for coming in all the way from Florham Park. Hey, thanks for having me. You got it, man. So pretty wild time in your life. You're now a New York Jet. You were an Oakland Raider not that long ago. So first of all, just what's life for you like right now? Um, it's pretty cool, honestly. Like New York is pretty dope. Uh, doing things like this, sitting down, talking to you. Uh, not a bad uh, market to be in. The fans are crazy. I was actually already flying out here um, for St. Patrick's Day to hang out with some friends mm. and when I got came in to sign. And so just like the way they welcomed me, uh, like just walking around the city, uh, didn't 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 pay for a drink. So. <laughs> wow, that's a <laughs> so, great story. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially so, St. Patrick's Day. I mean, for yeah, 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 perfect, perfect. People timing. are already I having was a good in time. Irish bar, so they, you know, watch sports. Irish and... bar, New York Jet. <laughs> Welcome to New York. You don't have to pay for anything. It was awesome. And yeah, I mean, think really about if you guys start winning some games too. Yeah. Think about how it is now. Jets fans are so hungry for wins. Like we have a bunch of Jets fans here in the office. They're just they're waiting. And it seems like this is finally a year where things are going to push forward. So listen, you've been I on. I think a, this is going to be the year. Honestly. Yeah, you've like been. We're, a, you've we're been competing a, really, really hard mm. right now up front. I think our offensive line is going to be really, really good. Uh, Darnold's obviously like continuing to develop and. Just watching him throw, he's got an arm. Mm. Uh, a lot of things to be excited about. I think it's going to be a good year for us. And you've been on a championship team. You've been on teams in Oakland. So when you look at this squad right now, you mentioned the things that you like, but just what are some foundational pieces you look at and you're like, okay, this really could be something nice? Um, the locker room. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, it's not in season yet. You know, um, Not everybody is there that's going to be there. There's still a lot of things that have to happen. But... Uh, the locker room is really, really important um, for like a winning, winning team. Like I know in, in Baltimore, uh, with the year we won the Super Bowl, and even the years afterwards, it was it was a brotherhood. Like there weren't any like cliques or anything like that, and we don't have that issue. Mm. But um, definitely, when you f feel that locker room come together, guys are getting together off the field, whether that's like O line dinners or uh, offense team dinners, um, just guys you know, involved in aspects of each other's lives, that's like a key piece because then you have that, like, you know, brother mentality. Like, right, I the can't connectivity. Like my brother down, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know his kids, his family and stuff like that. I feel like for me, that's like a big deal. Um, and that's something that people kind of overlook a little bit because, um, man, like when you're out there on the field and, and, and the bullets are flying, so to speak, uh, you, you go hard yeah. for the guys that you're really, really close to. Yeah, so. and you're looking in the huddle, you're like, that's my guy, I'm going to go to war for him. If there's another guy, you're like, I don't really know this dude, he hasn't really put in the time, I'm sure it's a little bit of a different feeling. I mean, you're going to be a professional, you sure. know, like, so you're going to take care of your business regardless, but it's just that last, like, missing, you know, push where it's just like, it makes it feel like a family, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you come into work and it's like, you're excited because, like, it's, you know, it's family. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So. And you had a great situation in Baltimore to walk into also. I mean, as a rookie to go to the championship, when did you realize that was something really special there? Um, I mean, I always knew I grew up watching football, so I know that's a really big deal. But uh, the leadership that we had, we had guys that had been playing like their entire careers and had never won. Um, for instance, Matt Burke uh, was our starting center. And he'd been playing for, I think, 15 years. Yeah, a long time. Had, an, <laughs> had never won. So yeah. we had guys like that that had played for such a long time. Vontae Leach, uh, um, just a bunch of guys. I mean, Ray Lewis was there. He had obviously won. But I think Ed Reed um, must have came right after he did. Right. So he didn't have one. And so to like have guys like that that are just like Hall of Fame mm. players, um, not have like Super Bowl rings. Like I, I came in there, and it was just like how I saw how big of a deal it was. And then just the process of what it takes to win and how to be a pro and, and, and the work ethic that's required to accomplish that. Um, everybody individually taking care of their bodies and training the way and doing what, what they need to do and then like bringing that together as a unit cohesively and then just like the bonding, the team bonding, I saw it all like come together. And, and like, just a different level of emotion for a guy like Ray Lewis or Ed Reed, you know, you work so, or even Matt Burke, you work so hard for so long and then you get to that championship moment. You you were spoiled. You had it in year one. I really so was what was spoiled. the wildest part of seeing those vets winning that year? Um, the wildest thing, uh, I guess, of seeing them win was, yeah, like the raw emotion of it, like just all us celebrating together and guys that are like, you know, married with kids and very serious and buttoned up and then just seeing them cut <laughs> loose like <laughs> that night and celebrating, that was like awesome to see. Like, and then just seeing like the look on the kids and the wives' faces, obviously as well, like knowing how hard they work, and then seeing like you know, 
it has been celebrated. Absolutely. Just like everybody, like my family being there mm. and them going like crazy. Like <laughs> they couldn't believe it. Like they got to meet Beyonce and they're like huge, oh, wow. huge fans. Like it was it was just crazy, like for everybody involved, like how big of a deal that was and to get that done, it was it was really awesome. Well that was also the Super Bowl where the power went out, right? Yeah. So well, what do you remember about when the power went out at that point? So the first thing I remember is thinking like this like this is this can't be real. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, we're we're dominating them. Like, yeah. it was you guys were rolling. Like, Especially up front, like we were doing what we wanted and running the ball, and it was awesome. And then, like, the lights come out, and I'm like, you know, reality, like, you know, it was just like, this is too easy. It's something in the universe had to happen. Yeah, and then the comeback begins. <laughs> You're like, this seems a little too scripted. Yeah, it for sure felt that way. Uh, I remember my uh, head coach, uh, Paul Rhodes, coming down mm-hmm. the stairs with like a beer. He's like, yeah, don't let up. Like, he's like, freaking out. Like, he's drinking it, like, a beer at halftime. <laughs> yeah, like, right before we started the game again, and the lights had went out, and I'm stretching and stuff. Wow. He's like, come on, like, don't let up on him. Like, stay loose and I'm like I got it is that the only time you've seen a coach with a beer at halftime ah uh, yeah because they're usually coaching right so. I was gonna say they're just they had <laughs> well, that's kind of weird seeing yeah. him that way but he's kind of like a cool dude I guess like he cuts loose I was gonna say I was like this definitely doesn't seem typical of NFL locker rooms from what I've heard but oh hey. no that was the Paul Rhodes is my head coach at Iowa State oh okay I, I got rookie, you I got so you got you kind of following gotcha like, all right like, well he was just chilling so. living it up okay I, I got was you. like I was surprised he came to the game yeah I was like, how did he get tickets for this <laughs> <laughs> that's a totally now I got you so why don't we talk about high school and college because obviously you're doing anything in the NFL now, but this is a long time coming. So mm-hmm. take me back to first getting into football and when you realized this could be a thing for you going forward. Um, so the first year I played organized football was uh, in the fourth grade. Um, I was eight years old. Uh, I had missed out on like two years already. I'm sure like you're aware of in mm-hmm. Texas, it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. So people yeah. start really young. It's, it's your livelihood there. Yeah, I mean like I have three sisters and, and no brothers, so that was like the way to, you know, kind of you know, have brothers mm-hmm. and, and have friends and stuff. So uh, finally getting to play, I was obviously really excited about that. Prior to that, uh, I was already like a big football fan. Um, my dad like had taped over the wedding vows with the, the Cowboys championship <laughs> in like, or something like that. So I had like grown I'm sure up mom was really happy about that. Yeah, there was two copies left. Oh, there She's you still go. pissed though. She's really pissed. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, like so just growing up in our house, like I, I, I just remember it being a big deal. Mm. Like. Uh, just being really excited as a whole family, just sitting in the living room, like, you know, cross leg style in front mm. of the TV watching football. Um, and just like all the lights and everything like that and like how my family would react, you know, when our team won. And so like to be able to do that, that was like always my dream. Um, I think that I was always, I just felt something all the time like that I would, I would make it and mm. I knew I had to work and I always, always obviously worked really hard. But it didn't get real until I would want to say like my redshirt sophomore year is where after that year I was like the way that I prepared my main focus in life was was that Mm. like I knew school was important and I got my degree but I always knew like this is what I'm going to be doing and I think at that point that's just how I kind of prepared. Was there a moment that changed that for you? Was it having to go through that redshirt year? Or is it just at that point in your life, you know what, I got to get serious about this? I think it was just like the guys that I was playing against. I think what made it real was like seeing Adrian Claiborne go first round, mm. um, seeing Von Miller get first ra- go first round, um, like seeing all these guys that I blocked like get picked like top two, top right. seven and stuff. And You're I'm like, okay. a sophomore yeah. and I've, you know, obviously didn't give up any sacks to any of those guys and had dominant performances. And so I feel like that was like the real test for me where I was like, yo, like I can line up against anybody and beat them. Mm. And I think that's when I was like, all right, yeah. And the Big 12 doesn't get a ton of love for the defense too. So for you to think to yourself, all right, these guys are top five picks. I'm Mm. doing my thing as a sophomore. Imagine me in a couple years. Exactly. So that's awesome. So once you start to build things out at Iowa State, NFL draft is rolling around. What were some of the biggest challenges in terms of getting ready for the league? Um... I don't really feel like there were any big challenges for getting ready for the league. I think that I've been really lucky. Like I've had really, really good strength coaches, and that's important to me um, to take that to the field. Um, I worked with the Anthony McKnight, who was awesome. Um, Jesse Ackerman. Uh, I just had I've had some really good strength coaches, and so physically, I've always felt prepared. Um, and I'm a passionate player, so I've always had that piece, like internally. And so I never really went out there feeling like I wasn't ready for that next step. I just kind of had to keep developing and be consistent. That was the main thing. I think my 
main focus uh, for me personally was consistency. Like that was a weakness for me because if I would be playing a team like, um, I don't know, like North Dakota State mm -hmm. or something like that, I wouldn't get as excited. And right. they're a good team in their own right. Sure. But, uh, but it's not Big 12. It's, it's not the, the same yeah. sort of level. So, I get it. Yeah, exactly. So it would be like certain guys obviously on the calendar where it's like, okay, like this is exciting. This is like competition. This mm. is what gets me excited is going against guys that could beat me. You know what I mean? Like that. Absolutely. You know, that's that yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think that was like the biggest piece was uh, – you know, no matter what the competition level is, like always playing to your standard. I got you. All right, let's go rookie year. Pancake blocks are obviously a big thing in the offensive line community. What's your first big pancake block on a big time major defensive guy where you're like, yo, I'm here. This yeah. is it. This is it. This is what I dreamed of. Um, I can't remember like who it was, but I've had some nasty ones. I know. The, Give me some of your best. Uh, the Chargers game, uh, my rookie year. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going in uh, to score. I think we must have been around the 20 or the 30, and we're running a bunch of run plays. I was at right tackle. Uh, that's where I started my whole rookie year until the playoffs. And I had a block where I drove a guy like 10 yards literally. Wow. Like when we watched it, like in the film room, <laughs> Coach Moeller, Andy Moeller was my yeah. line coach at that time. He, he literally didn't even like, he just said, wow. Like he coached everybody <laughs> else, and then right. when he got to me, he just kept playing the clip and trying to figure out how I did that. And he was just like, when your coach is silent, that's the best thing that could happen. <laughs> but like, I took this dude like ten yards wow. and just buried him. Like, and that's really hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, in the NFL, there's some big, and, strong dudes you're going against. Yeah. So that, that can happen was, in like, high I was school. So hype yeah, off you of should that. be. Like, I was so hype off of that. Well, the Ravens that year had a great running game. I mean, yeah, Ray Rice was doing that. Was actually that the game where uh, hey, did a little Ray Rice up the oh, middle. Oh yeah, like, sold all the t-shirts and right. sold, sold it to charity. Yeah, uh, he had a he had a we converted a fourth and I think twenty seven that game, mm. and in order to go ahead and, uh, and win. So that, that was a crazy run for you guys. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah. It was a good year. Definitely. So Michael Orr was on that line, right? Yeah. So what do you remember about playing with him? Because like we watched The Blind Side, we read the book, the movie, but what was the actual guy like for you? He was awesome. Like as soon as he came in, he like took us all as rookies in and he actually got like a bus and took us down to DC oh, wow. and like we had a night and he took care of everything. He was cool. Like he was like big bro. He was quiet, you know, to himself, focused on what he had to get done. He was just that type and I'm kind of similar in that way too. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he was a great guy, uh, highly intelligent. They obviously didn't uh, portray him. No, that was a rough like, portrayal. That, <laughs> that was, was really, really rough. Because yeah. that's going to be with you the rest of your life. And you're just like, it's an amazing story. Do we have to do that? It's like, yeah, come on. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. Um, that's but, the Hollywood aspect of it, you know? If he's, yeah. he's doing the extra help and all that stuff. And it's like, okay. But this guy's yeah. an incredible genius with football. He's a really smart and that's guy. The thing. Even after he wrote, he's written books. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's like the thing is, is some, smart guy. sometimes athletes are just completely mischaracterized, and you know it's, I'm sure it's a frustrating thing for you because it's like yeah. yeah you can ball out, but there's so many other aspects of your life. So yeah. what are some of the other things that you're really passionate about, interested in, etc.? Uh, music, yeah? definitely. Who are your who are your go-to listens? Um, right now, I'm listening to Darren Falana a lot. Okay. Right now, he's a Nigerian guy. I was gonna say I haven't heard of him yet. Yeah, he's he's good. I'm surprised. You know that more people mm. have, have maybe he's about him. to pop you don't know i think he has to mm. like at this point well it's guys like you that just got to pump him up at this point exactly like his sound is just it's it's crazy mm. like it's incredible it's smooth it's like i don't know how this isn't mainstream that's and awesome then, um, another guy that i'm listening to he's already kind of like popped but uh saba mm. yep um, love love his music good listen um a lot of chicago guys mick jenkins mm -hmm. is another guy i really like obviously chance the rapper you know but <laughs> easy chicago, go to the... chicago rap, chicago man. has like, got it going uh, they got a renaissance going on mm. right now so. i mean even the old kanye stuff you listened to when he was first coming up yeah, like, like it's yeah. good stuff but i mean it's like it's almost like revitalized yeah you know? and i think it's like having so much to like rap about obviously mm. you know uh, socially and, and what's going on in their communities and stuff like that too. That's obviously for an artist that's a spark. Oh, yeah. So it's kinda like just have you um, seen The Shy on Showtime? I have actually. I so like yeah, show. that that show uses a ton of that music in there as well. Yeah. And again, just we have an idea of something, Chicago, the city, people talk about it, but there's so much more to unpack with that. And that's an awesome show. I mean yeah. and we were talking off camera, there's so much good stuff to watch on T V but like there's nothing like that on TV right now. So it's really cool. I love that city, watch. too. It's in the summer. I've never been in the winter. The winter's so rough. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So I also travel, too. I'm really, I love to travel. Yeah, you were so. saying you're China, Japan. Like, where else have you been that you've liked so far? Um, New 
New Zealand. I Ooh. really liked. Uh, did some daredevil stuff. Jumped off of uh, <laughs> jumped off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> oh really? Like eight and a half second free fall was awesome. Wow. Uh, did a category four uh, whitewater raft. First so you're, time you're a thrill seeker. That. Yeah, I like to I like to have fun. Mm. Um, Australia. I really liked Australia. I love Australians. It's crazy. Like what do you I've like been about running it? into so many now? <laughs> they're just like so carefree and just mm. live life. Like they're always in the moment. Um, they're super like open, non-judgmental. You won't catch them talking about religion or politics mm, or anything like that. They're just like super low key, super chill. Um, but I really liked Australia, and then also uh, Italy, mm. uh, Thailand, um, Canada, Africa. You've been all over. Yeah. So where haven't you been yet that you want to go? Uh, I got to do South America again. I have been to Brazil, but uh, I need to go to Colombia. Mm. Um, I really need to hit that. My sister's there right now, actually, nice. uh, teaching. But that's somewhere I want to go. Uh, Puerto Rico would Ooh, be dope. Yeah. DR, a lot of my boys yeah, are in yeah. DR. And it's a good spot. Yeah, they keep telling me about it. And I'm like, uh, love to find out. Like, <laughs> Give me so. the invite. Come on, can we make this happen? I'm a single guy. Come yeah, on. Yeah, so, yeah. Have you been to Paris? Yeah, I have, actually. Paris, yeah. I went last summer. Amazing place. I see. I had a different experience. Yeah. Um, what was your experience? So I kind of traveled with two knuckleheads uh, a little okay. bit. So like, it didn't make it easy that neither of us uh, spoke French. Like, well, the Fre- okay. Us. Let's let, let's lay this out. So French people can be super rude, right? Yeah. They don't. Sp- they're not going to talk to you in English. Mm-hmm. If you went on the subways, the subways smell really bad because everybody doesn't wear deodorant. So everybody kind of had bo the whole time. Yeah. But I didn't focus on those things. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to focus on the city. If I was solo, it would have been a way better mm. experience. So Obviously your boys kind of ruined it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah well, they, they may not be on the next trip. <laughs> <laughs> if I go back, I'm probably not. Uh, Dan's, I'll go with Dan. Okay. But you're the guy. Yeah. Give it another shot. Yeah, bring, maybe, bring, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll be more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give it another shot. But the Louvre, obviously. Louvre is amazing. That was awesome. Yeah. Like the art there. Well, was, the Mona Lisa is so small, too. And everybody's just around the Mona Lisa. So yeah. you look right across and there's a giant painting right there and you're like... It's, it's a weird thing actually. I feel like they must have had it on display because I ran into it like the year before I want to say hmm. in Italy. So I'm like, what is the Mona Lisa called? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it does here? sometimes switch museums. I so. was like, what is it? Like, and that or they have the again, fake... Like, uh, I was in Ice... Was it Iceland or Amsterdam? Amsterdam okay. and I ran into the Van Gogh one, hmm. like the crazy yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I, ran, I keep running into that one <laughs> in places too. I'm like, that's what's up. I'm yeah. living right now. Yeah, you absolutely are. Have you been to Barcelona? I have, wait. In Spain? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, all right, here we yeah, go. Yeah, Barcelona was like the first international trip I took. Amazing spot. Great it food. It doesn't shut down. Either. No, they just keep rolling. Like well, right I, on the water like you, that. The, the beach there? Oh yep. Oh my gosh. So we were in uh, an apartment. We would run to the beach every morning, and then we'd just get breakfast right by the beach, and I'm like, this is nice. This is this is great life right the here. Food, the food there was food awesome. Food was dope. Did you go to the bunker for like no. sunset? Dude, it's, like worth, it's like worth going back there. Like, <laughs> spent awesome. like seven days there. I didn't go anywhere else in Spain except Barcelona, and I missed yeah. out on the bunker. Yeah. Bummer. Well, that's cool that you do all that traveling. And it's nice after a really rigorous NFL season to just separate and get away. So Exactly. When I you went th- four years without doing that, but, you know, second contract can kind of... <sighs> you can breathe a little Take bit. Take that deep breath. And listen, so. it, nothing's guaranteed in the league, exactly. too. So it's like, yeah, you play well early on in your career, you get a Super Bowl, but then how do you take that next step into getting that second contract and really getting paid so you have security going forward? Um, honestly, I feel like that approach was the best way to take. You know, you just kind of have to sacrifice a lot, man. And, and you know, uh, it's it's all in. You're not really going anywhere. Uh, you're, tra- you're training, like, uh, until you get to that point. You know, like it's first guy in, last guy out mm. for a long time. Um, it's performing at a high level for a long time. And then hopefully your team rewards you for that. And if not, you hit the market and, you know, yeah, you just see what happens. You got paid, got paid. No- <laughs> it was nice getting paid in Oakland, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It long was time a, coming. It was a long time yeah, coming, man. man. Oh, oh, man, I can't even express what that's like. But, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that as far as like work and um, you know, not for really, years and years and years, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Work. you know, so um, with me, it was only four years. I'm sure there's people that right. are waiting for a promotion or whatever. Sure, 10 for, years in the for, making, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but still, four but years in the NFL, long feeling. time. It's a great feeling, yeah. I'm like, oh, gosh. So, let's talk about your Oakland experience because I feel like it had all these different twists and turns. When you think about it now, separated from it, what mm-hmm. sticks out to you the most about everything in Oakland? So, what was dope was like the first couple of years, like those first two years. Um, man, we really just, we got it done, especially up front. Um, 
I felt like I was literally the missing piece because mm. they already had talent. They had already they had Rodney Hudson up there, um, Pro Bowl center, Cole, great guy, like perfect right guard, uh, Gabe Jackson, mm-hmm. dog, uh, similar playing styles, perfect man. Um, and I really just can't. Donald Penn, the veteran. You guys had a super tackle. underrated line. Nobody I talked about you like, guys. Like the only thing that it was was just like the way that I played. Mm. Like it was just my passion, and that was just like the missing ingredient. Like they had the talent there too, and also uh, they had an issue with uh, an injury with Rodney at mm-hmm. end that during that season. So he played hurt a little bit. But uh, like me coming into that that system and that line, like we were we were strong up front and, and kind of the engine for the entire team. Like if you're not rolling up front, it just really doesn't work work that way you can't win um, without a good offensive line so that was that was awesome that's what really st- sticks out about those first couple of years on top of that um, Joe Gomes uh, strength guy got lucky again mm. you've one, had one great strength guys. yeah, I've yeah. Been, I don't know what it is <laughs> I've just been really blessed really fortunate to have some really really great strength coaches and this guy was just phenomenal like one of the best I've ever worked with wow. and what's awesome about being here in New York is uh, Justice Gallic is the real deal mm. as well so finally you know um, that there last year um, we kind of you know nothing's ever perfect but we didn't really have a good uh, strength program mm. we had a new guy um, and that uh, makes a huge difference and then injuries yeah exactly and injuries because, yeah so yeah. then um, that is connected you know right so right if you absolutely have a guy that is knowledgeable um, suddenly can, more injuries are sprouting up and you're like you know what these two things are probably connected yeah that's what a lot of people like to point to yeah so yeah. Some people don't really get that. No, no, but it's important <laughs> to talk about it. And honestly, I think you probably came out of Oakland at a good time because Gruden, Mayock, I think they're trying to figure out a lot of things right now. Yeah. And I, I know you've talked about both those guys, but it seems like this is a better fit for you this overall in a lot of different ways. Better. It's better. It's, I'm very fortunate to be here. I mean, obviously, in the moment, you know, you're like moving your whole life, moving away. I think one of the toughest things is – uh, I really love the Bay Area. Mm. I love it's a great it spot. I, you know, so like, just that aspect of thinking of moving away from somewhere where it was the first like place where I was like, whoa, like this feels like home. I feel mm. connected to this place. Um, I can see myself, you know, settling down, raising kids here, and all that. And then you know, just then getting that feeling boom. and then just being moved out. You know, but there's so many positive things here, you know. So I'm and you're a positive guy that you're focusing on everything, too. And, like, looking at this Jets team, it, it's a hungry team. And you've seen this at a couple of different stops in your career. So how are you going to use your experience to help these guys get the job done and get to where they want to be and back in the playoffs and beyond? Um, so I'm not really, like, a huge uh, rah-rah guy unless it's game day. But, uh, <laughs> you seem like a chill guy Monday, chill Monday through Saturday and then Sunday, helmets on, and it's like game over, lights out. I don't even know how or why it happened, but apparently <laughs> I dab too hard, too. So some guys like, don't even dab, like, they won't even dab me, depending on the guy. Um, but, yeah, so I feel like just leading by example, um, just like the way that I play and my energy, um, I feel like that's how I've always kind of led, um, you know, just being like kind of like that catalyst. But I mean, yeah, I'm I'm older now, and if I have to, I'll say something, especially if things aren't going well. Right. Um, I would like not to do that because I like to save my energy mm-hmm. to um, produce. Uh, but I think that that's probably the next step for me is more of a leadership role and uh, talking to guys, bringing the guys that are that are down that aren't really like with you. I think I'll be probably doing more of that because I've you know played for a while and I can kind of see. Uh, when somebody needs to be picked up a little bit. So I think that's going to be the key. Um, but as far as, like, uh, talent and, and how young we are and the energy and the, ta- and, and the ambition, like, there's a lot of hungry guys that have drive mm. on this team. Uh, so it's just, like, combining that collectively and kind of making it more like a, like a wolf hunt, like pack mentality type of thing, where it's not just uh, individuals doing really, really well for themselves on and off the field, but it's, like, everybody can eat. Connected, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. Who are the guys that refuse to dap you up? Um, it's mostly skill players, mostly coaches. Really? Yeah, coaches are scared. Some of them <laughs> want to feel it, and some of them are like, hell no. Some of them are like, get the heck yeah, away from me. Like, no. <laughs> like, literally, I'll walk by some guys, and they'll literally, I remember Greg Olson a few times, mm. like, flinch a little bit when I walk by him on game day. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just my energy. Lee Smith was another guy okay. we headbutted every series. <laughs> like, that's just, it's weird that that's, it's Sunday and that's me in the weight room and me on Sundays. Those, those are the just two times up to a different I'm just level. like dialed up, man. Like it's different. Well, I guess we'll see with Coach Gase, what kind of guy he is, you know? Dude, he's, he's a badass. Man. I mean, like, we saw those eyes popping in the press conference. There seems like there's some intensity there. Yeah. Why do you say he's a badass? 
you can just tell. You know what I just mean? Just kind of like the way he carries himself. It. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Like he's just got that. You know what I mean? He's got that dog in him. Yeah. Yeah. So seems like you got a bunch of guys. Like I'm, I'm pumped to see Le'Veon Bell because it's like he was out a year. We heard the whole narrative in Pittsburgh, but like that is one of the most talented guys in the league. You've blocked for a lot of really talented guys. What excites you the most about playing with Lev? Um, just like you said, like the way that he, you know, he's a talented guy. He makes plays. He's an impact player. Um, he's one of the best running backs like in the league. Uh, seeing Marshawn take a year off and come back and perfect example, come back fresh and just explosive uh, at his age. I can't imagine what Le'Veon is going to be like when he comes back fresh. Like running backs take a lot of hits. You mm. know, I mean they're just as banged up sometimes as linemen. They don't Absolutely. take as many yeah. reps, but uh, they take they take a lot of hits. So. Uh, to see him get a year off and, and watching him on IG grind in the way he is and just knowing that he's an ambitious guy on and off the field as well. Like, when a guy like that is fresh and has, has time off and has his mind yeah. off and refreshed and he's back doing what he loves that he's been doing his whole life, I mean, come on. Like, let's be real. Should it's be in a good be, spot. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best Marshawn Lynch story from your days with him? There's too many, man. There's so give me, many. Give good me stories. like a little like one. Every day is, is a good story with Marshawn. Because he does so much great work in the community and everything like that. Like that's the part we never even see about him. It's like the Skittles, Beast Mode. That like, was the dopest thing. Like I remember it was actually his year off and I was just like walking down the street, uh, getting a haircut or whatever. And I guess it was a barbershop he grew up going to, and he was literally on them little big little bikes. And he, <laughs> he was like, oh, what's up, man? Like I had gone to like a party earlier in the summer at his house and like He's just like a dope dude. Like he's super real, super authentic. Gives back. That's awesome. Um, you know, he has Fam Fam First is his foundation, and they're doing a lot of really good work. And I just love how like when he does something like Beast Mode, mm. like my boy Alvin Bow and my boy Ace, like he was like my OG at Iowa State, and he's working there because they connected cool. in Seattle. So he nice. like, just keeps his people close. Like you know, they work with him. It's just awesome. Like I've, I, you know, you just don't see a lot. Of, like that, and then he's buying up Oakland. You know, Dude, that's like he's really doing great to like see. he's doing everything. Yeah, it's it's awesome to actually see that. Like it's Absolutely. cool. I've never seen that before. So, and then also he's just not like a super serious guy. He jokes around a lot, so it's cool. <laughs> you need that in the locker room. It's cool. Like it's it's dope. Like he's 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 a cool dude. That's awesome. Are there any guys on the Jets now that you've played with before? Um, C.J. Mosley. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we played in Baltimore. In Baltimore. Yeah. That was a big signing this offseason. He's a baller. He's a yeah. baller, bro. Like, he makes plays. Like, he makes I mean, he had a ton of tackles plays. last year. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't he won't say a word. Super quiet? He's going to make them plays. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If he makes the plays, uh, nobody else will care. Like, same same thing with you. It's like, you can be quiet, and then game day comes, you want to talk. But each, exactly. each person kind of figures out their role. And I think early on in the season, you guys will kind of figure everything out. So it seems like a lot to be excited about. So when people do check you out for the first time this year, in your gang green, what do you want them to know about you as a guy and you as a player? Um, me as a guy, um, I'm just somebody that's going to give forth 100% effort, um, and I guess that translates uh, as a player as well. Like just um, everything that I have in the tank mm -hmm. on the field, I'm I'm giving. You know, um, I'm going to leave exhausted. I'm going to leave beat up. Uh, I'm going to have to put myself back together again. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, I only know one speed. Uh, I go until the gas is is gone. Uh, so that's what I want them to know about me as uh, a player and as a person. And then also that um, I guess that I care about people. Um, I, I want to try to make people happy if I can pick people up when they're down. And uh, just, it's just important to work hard and be a good person, I guess. Is, is what it was we got a lot of Jets fans down. They're ready to be brought back up. I hope you guys can do that this year. KO, so it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. See you next time here on The Sit Down.